Okay, so I'm moving on to the main wheel, and it's the bit that I'm most nervous about. Uh, primarily because this is a huge chunk of brass, and quite expensive. I think this bit alone costs about £40. It's uh, 5 inches wide, uh, 5 inch by 5 inch, and it's 3 eighths thick. And just to give you a perspective uh, of a normal clock wheel, if I grab, I mean these are the wheel, the wheel blanks for the remainder, I mean, the, this are ch I mean these are chunky wheels and if you just look at the difference between those you can't even compare, it's nearly double the thickness so it really is a big slab of brass OK so we're all ready to uh, cut a hole in this expensive piece of brass here we go Okay, so normally I'd take it off for the video, but I've tightened it all nicely up and uh, I must admit I've got it really nice and flush and tight, so I don't want to spoil my setup now. But I turned down a custom aluminium mandrel um, or arbor. I've turned the inside diameter perfect to, perfectly to match the uh, bored out brass blank. I've chopped the edges off just to try and uh, make it a little bit more round. And now it's all mounted up, uh, and I'm going to try and turn this round. Okay, about 10 minutes into turning this round, and we're getting some sort of circular profile on it, so I'm just going to keep going. Okay, so I've got a problem, and I've had this a few times now on clock wheels with this setup. So I've got an ER32 collet chuck, but the problem with it is, without getting it out, that the the, the base of it is so wide uh, that I can't bring the cutter down um, far enough to cut the wheel without the actual chuck fouling the, the top edge of the wheel. So it sounds obvious to make a longer arbor for it, but then I start having issues where, um, basically I'm holding a larger arbor, it's not turning true. Now I know that shouldn't be an issue, and it is something I need to figure out, but the last few times I've got round it is by using the drill chuck, which I know is not ideal, um, but I'm afraid it's the only method that I'm using. So I've centred this up, uh, I've used the marking method to get it absolutely bob on, so that's where you mark it, literally just scratch um, with the cutter on one side, then you spin it 180, and you bring the cutter to the other side and check that the position should be the same uh, and basically keep repeating that until it's perfect uh, which it now is so I really don't know what more I can do I know that should be an ER32 chuck so I might be sorry with myself for using this but I'm going to take it nice and slow and we're going to go with the first wheel cut Okay, so I've found my depth now, um, and I've just got a faint line of blue on the top of the wheel blank, um, just at the very tip of the tooth, just so it's just meeting. Um, so it's just a case to keep moving around now and cutting the rest of the teeth. Well, I know we're only early into the project, but I've had my first moment of sadness, and that's due to trying to take a video of a momentary lapse of concentration and you can see there whoops try again you can see you can see here that I've trimmed one of the teeth so after storming around for 10 minutes um, I've got to make a decision basically do I create a new wheel which is an awful it's not time time's not an issue it's money like I say that blank cost just under 40 pounds um, for the brass alone. I think just purely uh, for money and so I can keep going, I think I'm gonna correct this, so I might as well show it now. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna mill basically a slot on the top and then I'm gonna silver solder uh, a new piece in. 
and then I'm going to re recut some of those teeth um, and see if it holds. That'll at least keep me going uh, until the end of the project to check it works. If I'm unhappy with the final look, because I'm no doubt you'll be able to see that it has been repaired, uh, then I'll cut a new wheel. But right for now, um, I can't afford just to, to grab a new piece of brass. Not so early on in the project uh, until I know everything else is going okay. So I've calmed down a little bit now and I'm going to get on to spend the next hour trying to repair it. Okay, so this is uh, where I'm up to. I've made this little insert, which fits quite nicely in there, relatively tightly. Uh, it slides in, and I'm going to silver solder it. Um, I wasn't. This obviously wasn't intentional, and this isn't something I was looking forward to do. So I'm probably going to do this off camera now, and hopefully come back if it's been uh, if it's been successful. And if it's not successful, this will probably never be shown. Okay, so I've just silver soldered the part in. That's it there, and I'm just cutting the last tooth now. I'm not going to make the same mistake and uh, spoil it with the camera on, so the camera's coming off now, uh, but the final tooth. Well, after the disaster that I had, and I'm absolutely incredibly uh, pleased with how well that's turned out. Um, in fact, it's almost, almost invisible. Um, there's, it's actually easier to see on camera, you can actually see a change in colour in real life, but you can see just there, that's where the repair has been made. But the teeth are all nicely formed and like I say, when I look at that, you can, you can hardly tell. Okay, so the next job now is uh, getting that crossed out.